Tell me the background of this documentary. Well, basically, it's just my life story. You know, um, you know, being a child prodigy, coming from New York City. Um, you know, from 10, 10 years old, 11, I was getting so much publicity. Um, things I had to go through and uh, midlife crisis. Played in the NBA for 14 years, so it was a time like two, three years ago. Everybody was doing this phase of documentary. And then when people came to me and was like, yo, you got a story, you the man, you should tell your story. And I said, you know what, that's good. And then my mother passed away in 2005. So I said, you know what, I'm going to do it. Because my mother would want me to express myself and help others. And all the, you know, the demons and the dark, dark, palace, dark alleys I was going down and all that just to help others. So that's basically what it's all about. But it's, uh, it's not a basketball film it's a life film that's what's so you know inspirational and just trying to help others now to start from the beginning um as i called you mr new york um at the age of six oh i'm not sorry not six but like sixth grade like you were on the front page of newspapers considered the best player in new york you know defeating um or i would say almost accomplishing what kareem did like I don't you want to say I'm the best. I'm humbly, I take that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I respect it. But now that I'm finished, I always say I, I'm, I'm the best out of New York because I'm 6'2", 170 pounds. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was 7 foot. Right. He was taller than everybody. Right. Right. The way I dominated and what I, and what I brought, it wasn't so much the game. It was the cultural, you know, what I brought to New York and uh, the swag, the attitude and everything. I'm New York, man. That's what's up. <laughs> So what is different about your game than anybody else? Because you were considered the best point guard coming out during that time. You were the number two pick, the youngest in the league at that time. So, like, what is different about you than everybody else? I don't know. I just, in New York, I guess, at the time when I was coming up, you know, a lot of uh, point guards, we couldn't shoot. So I had the mid-range game. I could shoot. Right. I could dribble. You know, point guards in New York, you know, we're going right. we to we dribble. Right. You know what I mean? But we couldn't shoot. So, I, I, you know, I separated myself. You know, I could shoot, you know, off the pick and roll, could shoot. You know, just the mid-range game was uh, very special. And I just think, like I said, I go back. Like, when I was young, playing in the um, CHSAA, you know, that's Catholic High School Association, it's Catholic basketball. It was like I brought a lot of attention, not only to myself, but to the whole sport, right. to the whole city game. And that's, you know, I, I love it, man. I'm a homer, man. I love New York. It's still a mecca of basketball to me. So being that young, what was it like to have all those accolades, all the awards, all the attention at such a young age? Um, it's a blur to me because I had a, like, great supporting guys. My mother wasn't there. You know, that, that's deeper into my, my documentary. Uh, my mentor, Vincent Smith, you know, and Pierre Turner helped me a great deal. So I, it was a blur, really, because they kept me grounded. They was like, man, you ain't do nothing, man. Get up <laughs> out of here. Get up out of this ghetto. Take care of your family. Then you saying something. So it, that, that, they, made, they grounded me, you know. They, they, they humbled me early. Now, when you were going to college, um, you had Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Syracuse. Like, you had all these huge schools that wanted you. What made you choose Georgia Tech? Um, you know, Coach Crimmins, you know, he recruited my mom. He's from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother loved him. And, um, you know, I, I was going to go to Syracuse for a Washington. Okay. I wanted to go to Syracuse. My mother, okay. I don't know, rest in peace, but I don't know what they Georgia Tech did. They might have gave us some money. I don't even know. <laughs> my mother's street, so she ain't going to tell no, no, she ain't going to tell that. Right. <laughs> she took that to her grave. Right. But uh, she was like, you going to Georgia Tech. Okay. And I was like, okay. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But right. it was the best decision for me. I loved it. My two years was the best of my life. Now tell me about Lethal Weapon 3. How did that nickname come about? I don't, I forgot. I think Brad Nessler, the commentator, uh -huh. he made it up, uh -huh. I believe. And, uh, you know, me, Dennis Scott, Brian Oliver, right. 
you know, we all average. I don't think it's ever been done. We all average 20 points right. more in, um, on the team in the college ranks. So it just was exciting, man. We, uh, we was together. We, that, that year, 1990, we went to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. That run was very special to me, and it, it would always live with me the rest of my life because not only basketball, but uh, how we connected right. with each other in, in, in life. Yo, we brothers forever. So after that, um, stayed there for another year. Your average and points went up, and then you went to the NBA, number two pick, went to the Nets. What was that moment like for you? Oh, it was exciting. You know, I, uh, I didn't even want to leave school. I, was, I wanted to leave my junior year. That's rare. That's real talk. <laughs> You know, I was, you know, you fear what you don't know. Right. You know what I mean? I was like, I was comfortable. You, we, we comfortable. We get it. You know what I mean? But uh, my coach did the research. He was like, you got to go. Man, you're going to be top five. Right. You got to go. So I left, and um, I was able to take care of my mother. That's the main thing about me. My motivation was my mother. I was tired of seeing her struggle, mm -hmm. not knowing we was going to live, not knowing we was going to eat and all that. I just saw my mother cry and abused and all kind of stuff. Right. That's deeper into my documentary. Right. You know, but... That was my motivation. It, it was it was an exciting moment for me to see my mother happy. Yeah, wasn't about me, it was about my mother. Right. So you played in the league. What were those years like for you? Those fourteen seasons, I believe they were. Oh, great. 14? Yeah, great. I don't have no regrets. Uh, NBA is awesome. Um, playing against the, you know, the best the uh, best athletes in the world, right. making a great amount of money. Um, uh, VIP treatment, um, everything was lovely. I, 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 I always say, you know, Mr. Chibs is, I'm blessed and I'm lucky, because <laughs> yeah. I could have made that that turn <laughs> mm -hmm. real simple and been in jail and right. just forgot about right. uh, another statistic. But I, I'm just blessed, man. I just I love my life and I'm a fan of the NBA. It's a it's a great lead. It's a great. Um, it's just great how, you know, the, the world has you know, grasped on the basketball, right. you know, and I always tell, and I always tell my son, I'm like, without this orange ball, I'm nothing. Right. So I was blessed, you know, I was able to take care of my family through that. So I would never disrespect the game that took care of me. So what are you doing now after retirement? I got a gym out in Tampa called the name of the gym is the clinic um i've got a um high school program youth program but i'm trying to get to where i um i get some pros some college players come in and work out with me but also with life i'm, I'm adding on with the mentorship program where i can you know mentor some of these young guys that's coming up um to help them along the way uh, i experience it I, I always say experience is the best teacher now, what is it like for your sons to come up under Kenny Anderson? Like, is that pressure on them to be anything like you? Or, you know, are they just like their own person? They don't really care? I don't know. I, I, I know it's a lot of pressure on them having a Kenny Anderson name. But you know, I'm there for them. Whatever you do, you're a garbage man. man. Whatever you do, man, I love you. Whatever. Just just go. Just, go, just be the be best at yeah. it. And be happy and be able to take care of your family. And be productive in life and, right. and live a good life. That's it. You know, be, be productive. <laughs> so I don't know if you can say anything about this, but I want to know about the big three. I know Ice Cube recruited you. I, I know that, you know, you're involved. Can you talk about that and what you're going to be doing exactly with that? I might play and call. I don't know yet. So, okay. you know, I know they've been doing a lot of advertisement. I think it's a great thing right. see a lot of the uh, ex nb players, uh, you know, that still love the game, right. play on three or three. I do it a lot now, you know, with my instructions and training. I play, you know, uh, basketball and train a lot of the kids. So I don't know really. I got to look into the uh, paperwork to see what's going on. But you know what I mean? <laughs> Kenny Anderson is always, you know, ready to play. You know, New York City street legend. Oh, College legend, pro legend. There's no being humble now. New York City. There's just humble, gone I, out the no, window. No, it's out the window. <laughs> I'm retired. I don't have no more love no more, so I got to just give it to myself. <laughs> no, so, um, I guess what's next is why should people watch this documentary? Like, what's. Well, hold on, before you answer that, let me get your question on this or your answer on this. What about the state of the NBA? Do you think it's too friendly? I mean, compared to, like, what 
you guys are doing back in the 90s to now and i feel like i'm a 90s kid and i'm looking at it now like y'all are holding too many like hits oh god what yeah, nah, nah, nah. no um no the lead is great right. it, it, it gotta change they got great athletes it's a big it's a business it's a billion dollar business it's yeah. doing well but you can't talk to me and, 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 and you know me and tell me it's a lot different 90s right. you know what i mean it's just a little more harder yeah. a little more competitive um, now everybody, like you said, is friendly. Yeah. They wasn't friendly back in the days. Everybody was trying to make money, yeah, yeah. trying to go against you. Now it's so much money going on. Everybody's That's friends true. and branding. They branding each other. They That's trying true. to, and I understand it. That's but true. that just wasn't, you know, something I, I grew up on. So who's your league MVP this year? I, I don't know if you see anybody like Russell Wilson. Oh, Russell Wilson. <laughs> Russell Westbrook play. Yeah. Um, Scotty Pippen says it's the best he's ever seen. So what about you? What is your thoughts on Russell Westbrook it's unbelievable no it's unbelievable I, I watch it and I, I'm like this guy is like probably the best ever best athletic guard and probably ever gonna play in the NBA it's it's, it's like I'm like wow this go because I know what it takes mm-hmm. to be a point guard and this dude rebound this score and it's sick it's just it, 82 games yeah. it's, it's it, I, I let alone the energy mm-hmm. I, I didn't tell my son I'll be like yo this dude doing this every night do you understand what type of shape you got to be in? I don't even care about basketball. Right. So it's it's amazing. All right. But I say that James Harden is over in Houston. You're right. Yeah. Is doing work too. You're right. And they winning, and they're a little better than them. So I don't know. This year I would say it's co MVP. Yeah. You got to do co MVP because right. those guys, both of them guys, are balling this year out of out of the, out of the world. Right. Okay. Now the final question. Why should we watch Mr. Chips? Mr. Chips, because it's inspirational. Um, I'm going down a lot of, you know, um, dark paths that everybody, everybody in the world could deal with. And then just because I was on that plateau, being an NBA All-Star, and being in the league 14 years, you know, I could, I had a voice. Right. So, you know, I wanted to give back. My mother would want me to do it. I don't know. If my mother was living, I don't know if I would have did with that. Right. But, um... I went raw with it. You know, Jill Campbell, my director, did a hell of a job um, putting the storyline together. Barry Greenstein invested financially and time into my story. And um, it's just a great documentary. And it's uh, everybody. Everybody can feel it. Everybody can feel it. Who's in this documentary? I know you have some really big names. I I don't have too many. Anybody that was substance to my life was in it. Cause I didn't care about all that star shit, you right. know. Excuse, I was like, yo, what's my story? What you know, Kenny Smith from TNT, right. you know, he's in it. Yeah. Um, Bob Hurley, mm-hmm. um, Tiny Archibald, mm-hmm. Dick Vitale, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Coach Crimmins, Georgia Tech. Everybody, man, it, it just was. It's, just, it's a great uh, doc, and um, you better go watch it. I will watch it. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I promise I'll watch it. Well, Kenny, thank you so much for the interview. I really appreciate it. I know you have a flight to catch, and uh, I need you to get home safe. So um, any other words you want to say to everybody? No, just like watch Mr. Chibs. You, hey, you could go to my um, website, mrchibs.com. We got merchandise. We got all. You could keep up to date when it's going to be shown. And you didn't bring me a shirt. But Mr. Chibs, I got you. <laughs> I'm, 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 give me your address, okay. and you will have one next week because – it's got it. Mr. Chibs, man. That's what it's about, man. Kenny Anderson, man. All day. New York City. I'm the be- I'm New York City, man. No more humble. No more humble. <laughs> I retired. I don't get no more love, so I got to just give myself love. Oh, guys. That's it for the plug. See you guys later.